They're so legend out there. Once again, he's back in action. They couldn't do this well to get up and down. It's a little bit slow following the next few days. We don't shoot me. It is still a little dust. Yeah, we yeah. took that my dad took a lot of time. Oh my god, I I was laughing like earlier. That that was like he was the uh, head of the standard jelly. No, uh, no, no. Oh, I said like, like every picture. Sure. 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 But that was just like yeah, just make sure. No, no, no. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Well, if you got the back one, there's one that actually has. I know people for coming in. You know what you're doing, going so fast. You know what you were. Ah, yeah. Just like you're wrong. Did you ask? You probably won't. Yeah. Can we have any water? No, because I love water. We have something here. They don't want to do that. Ah. So the supervisor was trying to say, okay, oh, well, you know, I'm sure that we want to work here. And then, you know, they get the, you know, take the chunk back and put it to the dust. And they're like, oh, you so in the case of these people, they do nine and a half hours of getting nothing done. I don't know how long it was. That's how much. You know, so are you telling me to do that? So, do you want to take that Well, are they arguing or? I don't know. And then there is a little bit of a girl who's getting what you think she deserves. Yeah, she did. Or has her plan to do that? Yeah. 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 And then we'll send a couple of other people. No, I didn't just say you messed up your free budget. I don't know. 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 Public safety, you said? Yeah, mm -hmm. public safety or public works. Your public works, yeah. Oh, public works. Public works. Public works. Public works. Oh, good. Okay. 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 I apologize. Okay. 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 Yes, I what time it starts. They used to say immediately after the yeah. but they don't. That could it be something you could do. Any, yeah, I think they we know what the order is. Uh, used to say at six o'clock, and then the next one would say immediately after, and that way we only need one. Sure, uh, they call it. Uh, <laughs> Oh my 
this then we only need one pledge of allegiance and all that stuff. This yeah. is the way it's on. Yeah. I know. I know. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Do we yeah. have anybody by way of Zoom or anything right now? Um, Julie's present from EMS. Okay. No mayor tonight. That's my knowledge. Okay. What's that? We're going to have to hurry. Nobody's got to be last. It's usually me. All right, you're within a minute. There we go. Maybe it depends on which pop he's going off of. Which what? Depends on which pop he's going off of. That one just turned on one. So he's he was technically on the end. I'll get back to him later. All right. Call the order of the uh, finance committee meeting at six o'clock on Monday, March 27th. Uh, please take the roll. Other person, Bob Smith. Here. Alder person Joseph Reese. Here. Alder person Roger Smith. Here. Okay. Pledge of, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge, pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with justice for all. Okay. Item number three approval of the minutes. I will make a motion to approve the minutes of the February 27th, 2023 Finance Committee meeting. Any any changes or corrections? <clears throat> Do I have a second? I'll second them. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Item number four, citizen comments. Please limit yourself to five minutes if you have something to say about finance. If not, uh, we'll go to the item number five, tax center report. Kayla? Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hello. All right. Starting with the membership report. Uh, did that get in your package? I believe. Okay. They printed off. So for February here, we kind of had the same numbers as. Um, January, honestly, across the board for everything besides daily users on the back. Um, aquatic, we went up 70 people. Fitness, we went down uh, eight people. So, yeah, it's kind of, I mean, self explanatory. This daily swipes, um, the 6,812, that was up by the thousand or like 1,100 from last February. So, Pretty basic there. Any questions on that? All right, next for staffing update. We got um, an ongoing problem with being short staffed with lifeguards. Put it like I've done everything at this point, posts on Facebook, it's on LinkedIn, um, paper, and it's just no one's coming forward. We have a lifeguarding class at the end of April. Um, so if anyone wants to be a lifeguard, please let me know. Uh, it would be based or mostly weekday nights and some weekend hours. Uh, for front desk, Karen hired a front desk clerk last week, but we need one more. Um, those are mostly weekend hours or night hours. Um, one of our longtime building supervisors has uh, ran into some major health issues lately, so he's been out a lot. He works a lot of weekends and Monday nights. So we've been um, dealing with it with our other two building soups, but right now we still need one more to just cover his hours. Um, and these positions all cover or come with the takes on our membership. Anything with that? All right, next maintenance report. I have Scott here. Um, He's our building and maintenance director at the TAG. And I don't know if you wanted to. Either way, whatever you want to do. I mean, you can come on up here. Sure. And All I right. Can... And you got the sheets. Yep. I'll pass All right. Out. Uh, quick report on the building last month the recirculating line for the heat and hot water 
broke once again above the women's locker room. This is the seventh time that line has busted above drywall ceilings in the men, women, and in the storage. So well, that's seven different breaks that we're wrecking the drywall. So it's an old line and it's rubbing on the concrete that's in there. So as it keeps recirculating, that pipe keeps moving. So it already rubs through some of the insulation and you can't see it. So some of it's inside block. So we had it fixed once again, but we are now gonna get a bid and an estimate from the plumber to replace it from one end to the next to see what that's gonna be. They're gonna come hopefully sometime this week and um, address that situation. So if they replace it, I'm assuming they'll address the issue and keep it from rubbing on the concrete? Well, it's a thin copper pipe that was installed and it's not heavy duty for a big commercial building that was built. So what will they do different, I guess? They will put in a heavier pipe uh -huh. and they will insulate it better. And then they will make sure that there's no concrete in the way. Got it. The last one they fixed, they chipped all the concrete out, made a repair to keep it rolling again. Okay. But it's been three times in the women's, three times in the men's, and once in the storage closet. So the ceilings in the locker rooms look terrible because mm -hmm. it wrecks all the drywall, the paint, and everything. But it doesn't pay to fix the drywall until we fix the pipe. So you can bring somebody in with mud and tape it and fix it, but you know, a month or two, who knows? So oh, you're getting a couple of bids. Well, yeah, we just are going to address this now. We talked to Bob about different things. Yeah. We'll get two or three bids. Fine. But unless we're serious, this is a trouble we run into. If we're not serious about fixing something, it's hard to get the contractors out here. Okay, they're not going to just come out and say, Scott, I'll give you a bid. I'm not going to waste my time. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're dealing with with a lot of this stuff. So that's one of the issues. The other thing was boiler number three was down once again, that got repaired. And the damper in the unit above the fitness area to let the old air out was repaired too. That thing was 20 years old. So that's been fixed and repaired and done. But we now have a list, and Michaela's got a sheet there, of some of the other issues that weren't addressed and we would like it to bring to your attention. Um, the pool deck, which we had Bob come in and look at. The pool deck is awful, okay? The paint is peeling off. It's going in the filters, and it's going to get by the filters and get in our pumps, okay? Once it gets in the pumps, then it's big money to replace the pumps. So we got a estimate on the deck and the sheets that they have. Yeah. Okay. There's a sheet on that that she handed out on how much the estimate is for that. It's like $31,700 to do that pool deck and fix the cracks. So was this included in this year's? No, no, not at all. It was over the past years, the last director decided he was going to paint it himself, never left it dry, never sanded it. And I said, it's too humid in there. You can't be doing that. That paint is not going to hold. Well, it looked good for six months and now it's all off again. So it has to really be stripped down to nothing. Like the estimate has been redone. This is wood. No, it's a concrete. Concrete. Pool. Yeah. They had a. They had a. Excuse me. No. They had a two-part epoxy finish on it mixed with sand, <laughs> and uh, they even painted it without stripping it to the acid bath or anything. And uh, I guess you have a bid from a. Yeah, I tried three contractors. We got only one that actually gave us a bid. The other guy measured no way, and the other was a no show. It's very tough to get people in deep. Like, There's okay. a big, one big crack in the floor by the by the step. slide and yeah. steps that has that was a, an expansion was a settling crack, and that was patched just and painted over. Anybody's welcome to walk in. 
Right. Is this anything that you would police? Um, they won't touch it. Oh, they won't. I called Newman, I called Badger. Okay. They deal with none of that anyway. Right. Yeah. What about something like, uh, you know, nowadays they're putting these garage floors in? Oh, the are, civil and they, they repair the cracks and they and they say that it's guaranteed. You talk about those interlocking tiles. No, no, no it's like an yeah. epoxy almost. And, 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 the epoxies yeah. are only guaranteed for so long, too. So you're gonna run into the same exact problem. Right. The only real solution would be to have somebody come in and actually surface it. <coughs> yeah. Um, where they'll actually come in and they will have a machine that will grind that whole thing down. But that's what these guys that's what these they, guys are doing do, at number they two. They do before they put that yes. epoxy down, they grind yes. it. It's all brown though. But then you got to remember there's an exact amount of shark bite is what they call it. So you don't slip, but you don't cut their feet. So it's a fine line you walk there that it can get real slick if they do it. They don't have the right amount of shark bite if they're not into pool decks. You can't have it. People walking up them steps, kids going all the way up there, they come flying down, you're in trouble. You know, so it's got to really be done by got to be done by a professional. Correct. That does and we, we had the director who wanted to save a little money, so he just got a, a paintbrush and painted over it. And gave it to the lifeguards, and they all painted over everything, and that's what we ended up with. There's more than that for you to look into that. You know, if they're just going to resurface it. Anyway, you know, they, they do grind it. They're going to take it all the way back down to the I'm sure they can sprinkle some sand or something on there, you know, that maybe. They may have done, and I'm sure they've done that around pools in the past. I think that's what their bid is to do right now. So we take it down and right. It's, it's going to be taken all the way down and then ask what it kind of surface dry it out. Then that's just a suggestion. Yeah, that's fine. You know, we're always open to more suggestions. But it's very tough to get people in right now to even look at it. Maybe if Jack, Jack is curious about it, he's in that business. Maybe you could send him a copy of the bid. Jack, he does, he's refinished a bunch of cards. He can take a look to see if he thinks that that's reasonable too, but we have to do something. Right. Do you, do you have a copy of the bid? No, I don't. I didn't make copies. Okay, I got this is an extra one. This is actually their bid. That's what they're doing. Okay. There's only one bid. Okay. Okay. No, okay. yeah, nobody else wants it. Do it. Do it. And uh, the other one. Thank you. No, it's okay. So Maybe look in the right. You can take a look at it. Can't move the pool back in some way. It's terrible. And then there's a time they frame. They come in into your garage in one day. You know who's there? Who are these people, people that do the check this in. the garage floors? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think uh, uh, we'll let. Right. I don't know if there's any action we can take on this, except this is part of her her uh, report. What are the other items? Uh, we got the yeah. roof leak and tear leak in the front. This is the original roof? The original roof, but if, you know where all the cobblestone is up there? Okay, that roof up there, it's leaking into the front entrance area where it's wrecking all the drywall where you walk in. The administration offices, you can see we have all the tiles out. It's running right into there and in the room where they punch in and keep all their paperwork. So that we have uh, Lopez coming tomorrow to take a look at the roof. He fixed it a few times a few years back, but he said the seams are starting to open up. So they don't know what they're going to be able to do this time. So they'll be able to tell you if you need a new one. They're going to let know if we need a new roof or if it can be somehow patched. But it's, it's got stone. It's under gravel. It's got stone. Yeah. It's so, yeah. yeah. Then the recirculating line, you know, well, the drywall repairs are. Obviously, from that, and then we got parking lot that needs to be practical. The parking lot, you have it on the panel. right. We have that coming in to do that. We also have the rooftop and condensing units that are the original there. That those are in capital improvements, and hoping we can at least start putting one in a year. The one for the gym would not keep up when it was cold this last year, and it is serviced twice a year. But there's only so much you can do with it, he said. So, okay, the parking lot. I would suggest you coordinate with with Nick and uh, Jack Hurst and try and get it 
done simultaneous with when they put on Breckenridge path to tag center. I mean, you don't need you need sealing and we just need to crack sealed and sealed and then paint it if we can put it on the other back. It's up to you. I don't know how that goes. So <clears throat> swing in there. And well, that would be if Northeast Asphalt is here doing the other part, maybe they can bring a crew in. The... I'm not real sure if Northeast does crack sealing, and I don't think they will. Um, because you're looking for a company that's going to come in and more or less spray it, and right. we're we're grinding and putting the black top right. in. And I, I do not believe us to check that Northeast does okay. that type of work. We know that one area right to the east of the building that's about 20 by 15 that is all torn up that needs to be. It needs to be grown and redone. Yeah. Okay. That's something okay. I could look at. All right. Anyway, okay. And so, anything else you got for us is no. Any other questions, Miss Scott? Any questions you guys got? This is mainly to make you all aware of it. Then we have to right. adjust our and the pool. One more thing about that: we're down for two weeks, so we try to schedule this like a week before that. So this is something that we have to decide kind of quickly. Because I'm going to lose an extra week of that too, so we're going to actually be down three weeks, and people are going to be screaming. And it's always in August. It's, it's in August. Yeah. Yes. So that's why we got to try to act as fast as we can and and get a spot reserved. Otherwise, we can't push ours further back because you can only go like six months before that pool has got to be drained. There's too many solids in it. So. And if you do. If Lopez says you need a new roof and you put it off in bits, then we may have to approach Black Rivers to see if they'll help with that. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Anything you want to add? Nope. I'm just going to do my Rex. Okay, good. Got them all done. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Yep. <laughs> all right. Last uh, recreation report. Uh, the women's sixes volleyball league finished up last Wednesday. It ran for 18 weeks. Just a reminder, I got 10 teams in that. Um, it all seemed to go really well, really popular once again. It's always a good winter league. Um, youth basketball program, I ran a clinic back in December, and it was supposed to be with Ford Conrad, and we were supposed to play games, but uh, that rec director did not. Um, so these kids never got to play games, and I had to turn it into a clinic. So now, with the new Ford Conrad director, I got those kids coming back and we're gonna play games on April 22nd and 29th at the Tech Center. Those are two Saturdays. Um, and then finally, it's just time to plan summer rec programs. Summer softball will hopefully start in the middle of May. And then with the, the approval perhaps of the lights, that will be very helpful for those leagues. Um, Recreation program for kids. I talked to Bob Barry this week. We got a cross country camp and pole vault camp scheduled in June for the pole vault and then for cross country in August. And then girls basketball, we got one. I was talking to John Schultz, uh, the head coach, this morning. And we are looking at the last week in July for that. Any questions? Back to the maintenance. Um, we want to we want to obviously get in front of this, so I'm just just trying to think ahead. You know, it's it's you guys. If we got these emergencies. We got to deal with them very soon. So I get that. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you guys can foresee in the future? You know, so we can get ahead of it for next year. You know, are, are the things upcoming that we need to, to do aware of that you know maybe we, maybe we don't have to do it this year, but you see in a in a year or two down the road we're going to need X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, just Right. Any, so any looking in the crystal ball that yeah. yeah, that's why we took one rooftop unit at a time, one yeah. condensing unit at a time. Yeah. And there's one, two, three condensing units up there, two rooftop units. I mean, you're looking anywhere from thirty to fifty thousand a piece. We're trying to do one at a time and take the worst one first. first. We know which ones are falling behind, uh, which aren't keeping up. The one doing the locker rooms is obviously not keeping up. The rooftop unit doing the gym is obviously not keeping up. 
The others are hanging in there, so those would be the first. So that's why we started. Sure, sure. That's why we started this list. I don't know. We got and these, the, but... Yeah, when uh, Mike Kurtz came back, they sat down, they sat down with, like last spring and, and made tried. that spreadsheet just to kind of proceed, you know. What, what do we need to do? Into 2026. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. But the roof became. Came as a surprise to you. For the, yes. Um, so it was kind of hard to anticipate it. You, know, you hope you don't have to you know, move to 25, 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, I guess where my head you know, automatically goes, well, how long is a roof good for? And, you know, what, what other things do we have that are nearing into life? And they did They did have the on last year's capital projects. They had the pool deck that they added in 10 grand that was probably put in by the former administrator and was in there. They could have added that one. But some of this stuff, they're doing a good job of anticipating a lot of it. Uh, and some of it, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, not yeah. casting stones at anybody just because I recognize right. you don't know what you know until, right. until it jumps up and bites. Right. right, if we don't bring it up now, that's what we're trying. Before we were told no, no repairs. The last guy said, no, we're just going to keep running. But you can't do that. And I'm like, <laughs> you can't keep doing that. No, no. argument no. is just going to go. During the budget it. process, we, I mean, this is your capital right. project list. During the budget process, we have a more refined capital right. projects list that includes all the departments and make sure that you see as far into the future as you can and put stuff down back for um, 2025, 2026. What is that? All right. Well, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else on who's not on the committee have any questions for? Or uh, okay, well, yeah, that's right. You're not. Okay. <laughs> You'll learn. Uh, yeah, I did because I like you. Item number six, treasurer's report. Um, I'm included in the packet February's budget numbers for the different departments. Um, as a statement, we we're continuing to have issues with the software, so we're really hoping. The transition to the new one goes starts next month and goes smoothly. Reconciliation is an issue. Payroll is an issue. Um, at some point, I'm questioning whether one of these functions is just not going to happen at some point. And then I'm not sure what we will do. So what was that? Wouldn't happen. The software. Oh, issue. okay. Can so we, we expedite the start of the software? It doesn't seem to be. We're hoping in April. Um, in April, we have training April. dates with them that you have a yeah. sidewalk, so we'll be going to push them. Um, <laughs> but I, I sent out several emails to them to try to make sure we're ready so nothing's holding up on our end, but I haven't had much response back. So, like with everybody that are raised up, it's hard to get a response. You know, everybody's short staff, so it's hard to get much out of people until those dates. But, um, that's always questionable. Otherwise, we're still continuing to work on regular audit. It's still in process. Um, has not been tied out. We're still running out of questions there. Um, we started the special audit. A lot of information being pulled for that. Um, and that's the majority of my time between the data software, payroll, um, HR, and audit. Any questions for the treasurer? Oh, for the um, I noticed in your report that pretty much everybody, except for those that are front loaded, like uh, like the public works and police department, are uh, within the 16% of two months. So I didn't see any big red flags there. People outside their budget. No, there's definitely so one of the things I was hoping to do with new software is clean up some of the line items. Uh, where I think yeah, we're, we're in the wrong place. Yeah, we're budgeting right. and like payroll set to hit automatically out of different accounts than what is being budgeted. Maybe um, something will come up next month, but I was surprised not to see more big caution flags during January and February. But that means that uh, most of them are staying within their proposed budget, except for small items that you know vacations and so forth and so on that happen. Anyway, anybody have any questions? Anybody at all about the treasurer's report? I hope you read it. Um, 
yeah, I've got a comparison from another city. So for these, um, let's start with the small one here. These do or what is it 120 in here? Membership dues. Can you explain to us what that's for again? And what's for $120 for comptroller? For membership dues? Yeah. The only dues for the comptroller would be the municipal Wisconsin Municipal Treasurer Association. We gotta do something about this sound so we can hear each other. Say that again. The Wisconsin Municipal Treasurer Association. Is that every month? No, it's annual. Okay. That's kind of we've had that every year. I know. Beginning of time. The vacation time was the payout for the previous session. Okay. Any other questions? I could probably talk to you at another time, you and I. Okay. Um. Let's see. Any more questions for the others before? Joe? Anybody? No. If not, now we go on to action items. It's a little different than the normal normal way we put things, but we'll get used to it. Uh, item number one, discuss with possible action rock and boom and Audubon days accounts. I think that's a little broad. I, or this, I think we're trying to approve the contract. Is that what this is on here for? No, this one keeps getting pushed down. This one, okay. I think, creates me. It's from if the city is going to keep holding those funds or if we're putting those accounts back on them. Correct. I, yeah, I think starting back in November, so before either of us, you guys were in discussion as you're taking the donations in and then you're paying the bills out. Um, it's been an issue on audit. It's probably something they prefer not to do. There's issues with internal controls. There's issues with who approves how those dollars are spent. Um, oh, okay, this is towards the open meeting flow and all that kind of stuff. And just the whole accounting overall. So I think the idea was um, if you want to continue to keep doing this, or if you would prefer to pass it off to a committee you know, or somebody else in town that was it's yes. better suited for handling it. There was, some, there was some work done to that. Yeah, I thought Rotary was handling, Rotary Alliance was handling rock and boom, weren't they? They're, they were approached about it, but I don't know that they actually took it on. And just recently, yeah. Audubon finally is a nonprofit. They finally hired a lawyer one on their own. So that but, should be coming up soon. So they won't really need us anymore. They don't need us anymore, no. So then the way they were tracking it previously is they literally just went through what the donations were and what those expenses were, and that left the balance as of last November. Fireworks, and this is before either of us has not been reviewed. The fireworks had $28,830 and Audubon Days had $39,281. So I think the discussion is going to be there's no obligation, but is the city going to give those funds to the next group to take it over? I think that was, that was, it was always, it was always done by the groups that handled it and profit. And the money they, Made was used for to improve, improve things and to and to uh, seed the next year's event, and so it act technically belongs to the group who was doing it. I guess uh, I had thought there was an issue with uh, if we if we didn't control the funds and pay the bills out of it. Then somehow the city's liability policy wouldn't cover. In the case of the fireworks, I think that that's part of, that they have a liability policy with it. But I thought the other one, the Audubon days, that if we didn't have the funds and pay it, pay the bills out of here, that somehow uh, they would they'd have to get their own liability policy. Is that what it was? Yeah, we were trying to figure out how to 
Now, if they, so that's on the next item. This item here, um, what? Oh, good. I'm speaking of the devil. Come so that's, on that's up. Let's let's badger you. No, it is okay. okay, sorry. <laughs> it's sorry. the same issue, just two separate entities. Right. Really. Well, except that Rock and Boom does have part of the contract with Rock and Boom is a liability policy. Uh, so, who put this on the agenda? Help me out. Why it, it's why it's, it's recurring. Wanna... I think it's just been tabled month okay. after month after month in the transition. I'm trying to figure out what they might want to do and how to handle it. Well, I don't, I don't think we want to keep it. We can't. We, if we're running out of time. I think I think the rock and boom, somebody here for that, is pretty much ready to make a decision and let uh, what the rotary handle it. Well, can I ask somebody in the audience a question? Christian? Yep. I'm confused. Who's going to handle rock and boom? That should be the rotary and Mike Schuett. Okay. I, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not a party to that. Oh, okay. he was here at the council meeting and we signed a contract, the mayor did, and handed it to him. And now the question is do we want to have them handle the accounting for it and the funds? And do we want to give rotary the funds that were left over from? Rock and roll. Is that pretty much it? I yes. believe so. And just so I can clarify, well, when you want to sever as well, like finish this year and maybe next year for the events. And is rock and boom the same thing as fireworks? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, so out of the 28,000, we signed the contract one. So that would be coming out of whatever that contract was. So, my impression is if Rotary or whoever is ready to take it on, we we'll want to hand it off to them and, and wash your hands of it right. and just be done with it. Yeah, I think, and the sooner the better, the sooner the better. Right. They're already going to be orchestrating. I think we have to have a contract with the nonprofit in order to do that. Do we have a contract with the Rotary for that? But if we're not handling the money, why do we need a contract? Well, we were handling the money, but that's the problem. I understand. But if we once we hand it off to them, why do we need a contract? I think Bob's saying we got to have a contract. Yeah, we already have the money. Oh, okay. And, and we're holding it for them. So okay. I don't want to do it. If you want to keep the money and let them start over again, no. The tradition was they would carry it over from year to year. We would pay the bills out of here. But I think I think a contract might I think Mike Stewart might have had a contract in his hand. Did he give us one? Did we sign that or was it that was specifically for the fireworks <laughs> only here that you spec for well, that was the next contract that they needed to okay, maybe we can clarify that. We could we could uh, now that we know pretty much what you were asking about, see if we can get a contract beginning next year with Rotary to handle the fireworks and we can give them well, right now they have we'll give them the residual from right, last right. year, but the, anything we left from next year, well from this year that goes next year. Can we do it? Center, why, why do we need to wait till next year? Well, we here's, here's what we could do, and this is just so my two years. Is I think we kind of know the direction that we need to go with this, right? We need to pass it back to them. Okay. I think what we could do to help move this along is send this to the full <laughs> council with recommendation to approve handing it over to the Rotary, contingent upon, and we might need to have him. Do his uh, waivers, but you would need right, right. Um, contingent upon approval by the attorney and contingent upon the rotary having everything set in place. So, I mean, literally, you're talking two to three weeks here, we could have the, the, the wheels turning on this to get it over to them by the end of April. I would say that's, that's perfect, except for the clerk raised the issue somehow. She's got this discussion that's happening outside of us. Talking about next year, why would you come up? How did you? Oh, no, because we already signed the contract for the fireworks for this year. Okay. Do, I, I do we have concerns yeah. about how close they are to the event? Yeah. These two different things. Yeah, I think I okay. think that would be fine because the contract really is more or less what we, we pass that on to them as part of the responsibility of them taking okay. it over. Does that make sense, Bob? Yes, it does. Okay. Are you on the committee? Yeah. 
In finance, yes. Sir. Okay, well then make the motion. <laughs> I just want to make, make, the, no, make the motion subject to that, and we will. Uh, All right, I will make a motion to send this to council with recommendation to approve handing over the funds to be managed by the Rotary, contingent upon attorney approval and him drawing up any contracts that might need to be made to make it possible. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Please take the roll. Alderperson Reese. Aye. Alderperson Roger Smith. Aye. Alderperson Bob Smith. Aye. All right. Progress. Aye. That's because we have too many anchors out. Uh, item number two discuss with possible action. The outstanding revolving loans fund balance. Be specific. What does this mean? Oh, hold on. You got to go back. Oh, oh, we do. Oh, did I miss that? Yes, you it's did. all one sentence. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. yeah, it's above that. Well, I thought we. Oh, yeah. That's no. the second half of the first sentence. No, we can. Normally, we have those as individual items. So okay. You guys. That it was revised because they were asked to be taken off. She so I think she's okay. 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 white mice. Nice. All right, got it. Okay. So, so Audubon is well just for <laughs> going forward. I don't. I mean, all the paperwork's been filled out to have its own federal ID number. So we will ultimately be like a rotary as well. So all the funds will have to have a contract. I assume to be transferred from city of Mayville into an account at MSD or TFB, one of those, and then Audubon Days will have its own, and it'll be its own entity. So we'll be able to, I guess, probably take all the liability off the city for insurance. I think it's still a city park because that it's still probably a, that we'll probably get an extra like rider policy. So okay. if something happens outside of the grounds that, whatever, that's not really important, but <clears throat> So it will the all of that has been like legally filled out for paperwork. So Amen. hopefully by the end of and I had a lawyer do it, so I didn't mess that up. So which I'm sure that I would. So going forward, once uh and there are three members of the community that are party to this, so it's not just me as an individual. There's supposed to now be a committee, quote unquote. Uh, but I'll still do everything and I'll we'll have a checking account and all of those things. So the city will not need to do anything. I will also be hiring a CPA, but they can go through it and we won't have any issues. I mean, not that it would reflect on you guys at the end anyway, but still we should do it the right way. They can look through the finances and awesome. confirm. So any anything going forward will be under that its own federal ID number. So do we right. need more committee action on this before we send it to council? I don't think so. I think we can do the exact same thing we just did. With, with yeah, the same thing we just did with Rock and Move and the Rotary. Instead of repeating all that, can you just copy the same? We're going to go with the same motion, just change out the wording for um, Rock and Move and Audible. Wow, they're two different. They're two different. No, that's what I'm saying. Just switch out the word. We're going to do the same motion, but with the appropriate wording for Audubon days instead and, of Rock and Move. And, uh, and, and uh, who's handling it? Which group? They are. They're going to handle it themselves. What's, it, what's the name of the group? Well, we've made the lot of on days. Okay, made the lot of on days. That's the new group. Okay. So, yeah, it'll actually have a, an actual legal name of made a lot of on days. So, awesome. So, that's exciting. I don't have the actual number yet, but all the paperwork's been filled But up. you see, you guys, what I, you should keep these in separate items because they have to be approved. Well, this predated us, however, so it's been okay, rolling right. down. <laughs> all right, so I'll make a motion, um, the exact same motion, just changing the appropriate. Wording to reflect Audubon days, um, still contingent upon attorney approval and any necessary contracts to be drafted to transfer the funds and responsibility to Audubon days. And I again will second it. Any further discussion by anybody? If not, please take the roll. Alderperson Reese. Aye. Alderperson Roger Smith. Aye. Alderperson Bob Smith. All right. Okay. Aye. Leader number first. Year. Oh, yeah, thanks. Item number two, discuss with possible action the outstanding revolving loan fund balance. The, the finance agenda was revised. I think you're working off the first one that was sent. The second item is the Ziegler Park lights. 
No. The mayor had put that other one on and he asked it be taken no, off. Are we doing anything with all of them? No, no sir. Well, okay. Mayor's one asked it be taken off. So oh, we'll okay. Well, we have to have the. That was the published agenda. Do I have a motion to remove what is it, two and three from the uh, from the published agenda? I mean, we have to we have to be unanimous. Well, the the public. Okay, so that one was revised. Revised was that revised before it was published by the newspaper? No, no. not before the newspaper. So technically, we are in violation of the open meetings law unless we unanimously agree to discard item number two and three. I make a motion to discard item two and three and move on to the revised agenda. I will second that. Please take the roll. Alderperson Roger Smith. Aye. Alderperson Bob Smith. Aye. Alderperson Reese. Aye. Okay, now on the revised agenda, which I don't have in front of me. Uh, it's right up there. Discuss a possible action for replacement of the Ziegler Park uh, ballpark lights. And that wasn't um, that wasn't published. So I'm wondering if we can actually technically we can discuss it. I don't know if we can take any action on it until it appears on a published agenda. Was it on the agenda that was outside on the board? Yes, board? it was okay, posted right. on the website. And it was posted in three public places. Okay. Public places <laughs> okay. Along with with that. Yep. Okay, then we can. <clears throat> so the Ziegler lights, remember we had 12,900 or something like that left over from a, a light that we got insurance settlement on. Is that right? Like that? Yes. Okay. Going from memory. My memory is 77 years old. Well, it seems to be still working just fine. Well, sometimes. So, and uh, the estimate we got from is John here. He is in Florida. He is oh, that's right. Oh, nice. Um, what was, did he ask for a specific, what was it? Uh, he wanted to apply the $12,900 to $70,000 bid. Is that what it was? He was, he was thinking it would be closer to seventy. dollars um, So you had asked him to get sealed bids. So we did not put a date on it. I think we've only received one. At City Hall, that I'm aware of, that is still steel. Okay. But we did not know who was going to open them or when. So we don't have, so we're not quite ready for this yet. Unless we only get, we may only get one, but I don't know what the end what, date what was. What was the cutoff date? I don't know that. I do not recall having a cutoff date on. What's that? You had 70, 70 to 75. Yeah. Right. Um, I think we can uh, let's see. What did they what did it say on the agenda? Discuss with possible action. That the, there's no real specifics in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. But we can as a the finance committee can take this action. We can indicate that subject to receiving bids, we will we are we are uh, we are committed to get lighting for the rec department and we are going to try and apply our funds to pay for the, and I took this use is qualified with ARPA funds. We have unused ARPA money. Isn't that right? Uh, as far as I know today. Yes. So it's all a question mark, but we can indicate that we're ready to go ahead with this project and we want the funding to be ARPA money. So then you can, the, our comptroller can check to see if that's the case. I'm sure it's the case you can use that, but uh, do we know how much ARPA money is available? About four or five hundred thousand dollars, something like that. The ARPA money is still sitting there, but I've seen where it's been discussed spending on a few different things, but the one that I believe is definitely earmarked for was the ambulance coming in. Which was the ambulance? Ah, uh, yeah. Was it's too, I mean, the low amount was 200, but I'm guessing it, I'm expecting it to be more. Was that, was that humor from ARPA money? I thought they were funding that themselves. Am I mistaken, Bob? No, that was put on the capital bar. No, it was talked about that it would be eligible to point. Nobody made the decision to use ARPA money for the answer. Sure. I don't believe it's been seen on the. Um, well, I think it was 
kind of lumped in the discussion between that and the bond proceeds, but the bond proceeds have been exhausted. Right. So the ARPA funds are all you have left. Mm -hmm. They are there if you'd like me to unmute them. Yeah, it has Julie and Christine. Yes, please. Julie and Christine, can you unmute? Okay, so as far as I know, I guess this is a little bit of a surprise to me because I haven't been told that the ARPA funds were, actually we started talking about ARPA funds with the mayor for a building and whatnot. And then um, we never heard any further discussion on where the ARPA funds were gonna be allocated. The one thing I do know is that they did not do any capital borrowing for the ambulance. So that I, I, we, she was told that we were all set last year. So we did not have any idea where that funding for the ambulance was gonna come from. That's not a normal procedure. Um, we've been buying ambulances for a long time. It's always been partially paid for by our contract, whatever money we had in our savings account for our contracts for services. And then the rest of the money was usually done by capital borrowing. So I do not know where the former comptroller treasurer was working with the mayor for funding. Um, unfortunately, that was not discussed with us. So if ARPA funds were going to be allocated towards an ambulance, um, yeah, I'm totally okay with that, of course, but we were not informed of that. It was my, I was here, unfortunately, but it was my uh, impression that an ambulance would be a qualified use for ARPA money, and that's a possibility, but it was never, you generally, the choice not to bond last year was an arbitrary choice. I didn't agree with it. We had enough stuff on there to go above a million. We can still do it this year. When do you expect this ambulance to be ready to, to be? Um, I would be surprised if we get it before the end of the year. Okay. They're telling us they're telling us there's a chance we'll get it, but it's not, we haven't even been giving a production date. We don't even have an assigned unit yet. So we don't even have a, a purchase for the third chassis yet. So we're, we're in line, but we don't have any specific dates. We did finally get drawings for the ambulance and we did, I can't talk about an agenda item that I need to put on the finance committee for next month. And you do have an item on the capital projects for an ambulance? Uh, that, was, did. that Yes, that was approved by council last year to make the purchase a bit early to try to get in on the current pricing at that time. So we, council did approve yeah, the purchase. So we're still sitting on that, on the capital fund. We can still choose to borrow this year for the things that are come ripe on the capital. Wait, the capital. Order the order is in for the ambulance. So the only thing is we don't have to pay for anything until it's actually produced. Right. And we could actually use a comp, they've done this other places, use a combination of ARPA money and uh, your your budgeted city funds and your the money you raise from your other communities too. I mean, it doesn't all have to come out of, out of one place. We haven't decided what to do with the ARPA money. I don't think any has been used yet. We get qualified for something like four hundred fifty thousand dollars that we have yes. used within four or five years. And these are all possible uses. The problem with free money is everybody. I said it has a use for it. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> so it will be covered. I would suggest, Christine, that you make sure that your ambulance stays on on capital borrowing. And I suggest that when it comes time that we borrow this year. Uh, for the things we need, including might be a roof on EMS and other things. But that doesn't get do anything like this. Yeah, we're getting on. This is, uh, I don't think this is quite right yet to talk about the lights. Uh, let's see. Well, at this juncture, we need this, we need closure on the sealed bids. One, 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 the. We don't have them. Yeah. Well, we have one bid, but we don't know what the deadline is. So we need right. to know what the deadline is for the sealed bid, and then from there we're. Right, right. So let's table this till the next meeting of. The finance committee and and but our intention is to fund the lights. Yes. Uh, whether it be ARPA money or through the budgeting process. I'll make a motion to the table until the next finance committee meeting. I'll second that. Please, all in favor? Aye. 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 I will entertain a, a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn finance at 6 49 p.m. Oh my god. Anybody second that? I'll second it. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. I'll be glad to give this to the next person in the barrel. Who is that? Public works. Public works. <laughs> Calling to order public works. Thank you, ladies. Regular meeting, March 27th at 6 50. Uh, roll call, please. Alder person Jack Abbott. Here. Alder person Joseph Reese. Here. Alder person Kim Wilson. Here. Okay. Item number two, approval of minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the February 27, 2023 public work. I'll second. Moved by Joe, second by him. All in favor? Aye. 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 Citizen comments as far as regarding public works, do we have any citizen comments? None. Okay, moving on. Monthly utilities report. Hi. Um, we had for on the on the water side for notes, we had a water main break on your center in Wisconsin, a service break on three four on Dayton Street. Um, our annual CCR, the Consumer Confidence Report, has been published to the paper, is complete and posted to the required media, as well as submitted to the DNR. Uh, we have allowed a service called LIWAP, the Global Income Household Water Assistance Program, to make payments on behalf of our customers. Um, something like heating assistance, they apply through the county and, um, and they cut the check back to us on behalf of their customers. Uh, in April, we'll begin the quarterly testing for PFAS for the grants of DNR. Three quarters of testing will be required in 2023. And that's it on the water side. Uh, for wastewater, utilities hosted Digger's Hotline Training Seminar um, for the utility DPW um, in town of <laughs> educational stuff. And repairs previously approved for private sanitary laterals on Green Bay Drive have been completed by Speedy Clean Drain and Sewer. Um, the last item that I guess both Jack and I have, I'll save you from your report. Um, the city is approved to be a CDL training facility. Um, we were facing new employees that didn't have CDLs with the new CDL laws, probably four to $6,000 in, in training fees to train new employees um, with the laws that were put out, I think February of 22. Um, City of Mayville is an approved private trainer now, so we can train our own CDL drivers and then send them off for testing. Great, that's all for that. Any questions? So what does it cost us to train somebody? One of any of us here with a CDL to, to put in the time and effort to train them. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm just looking at lost opportunity costs. I mean, sure. Obviously, we're taking somebody away from something else to do training. I, yeah. I'm all for it. Don't get me wrong. I'm all yeah. for it. I'm just kind of curious what the. Yeah, I just, neither of our budgets, I don't think, could handle it otherwise if we need yeah, to yeah, see, yeah. see the Yeah, yeah. And, and just to understand so even with the five to six thousand dollars that you would have to go outside, that doesn't include the time that they have to have their temps, yeah. which means that they're going to be driving with somebody else anyways. Yeah. So really, this is there's a lot of companies, even the unions are starting to handle this internally now because they kind of needed a workaround for this. Yeah. So this is honestly probably the best case scenario for the whole yeah, I kind of wind up being on the job training. Correct. Yes. I yep. can add to that. Uh, our newest guy has his temps, and he uh, he has been plowing. <coughs> So we have him in with another one of our drivers. Yeah. And, uh, training on the job. He's training on the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fulfilling his so that's a real win win. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, done. I have. All right. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. Number five monthly engineering and planning report. We have Nick. Nick sent me his report. You're Nick. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he has the 2022 Bridge Street project is complete. They are reviewing a paid request that was received at this point for it. Uh, 31 Breckenridge, the proposed martial arts studio is 
still on their reporting, no new information. They're waiting for the property owner to submit the conditional use permit for review. Hawker self storage development. The proposed self storage development in the River Knoll Industrial Park is progressing. Uh, we did not have any information with specifics on that. Uh, 2023 street utility projects. They had bid opening for the project on the 21st. They received two bids for work, and the bids will go to the utility commissions for review. 2023 TMT project. The county is looking to repay the county highway B next year. Preliminary estimate shared by the county puts the city's costs of this around 25,000. The project was awarded to Northeast Asphalt and they will hold a pre-con meeting with the contractor to set timeline for the work. And the Hilltop Drive development, Thomas Lefkowitz is looking to get started on his auto detailing and resale business on Hilltop Drive. He'll be resubmitting a site plan for review for the next planning commission meeting from Nick's understanding Mr. Letquitz would like to get started this spring. Mm -hmm. And that's his report. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. Okay, uh, moving on to number six, monthly DPW report. Yeah. Good evening. Hi. Okay, our first one is snow events. Uh, March has been worse than the whole winter. Unfortunately, we had a lot of snow events. A couple that snuck up on us. Uh, you know, they say a dusting, but nowadays with the forecast, dustings really don't become dustings anymore. So uh, we've been pretty busy all March with that. Uh, equipment, this is kind of a bummer. Uh, our loader that was stuck about 34,000 and two years ago. Is sitting behind the wastewater plant, but we don't know if it's a transmission or what, but we can't do the thing on it. So I'm trying to stay in house with that in house, but in Mayville, because if I go less than it cost me about $1,200 just to get it down to Madison. Uh, right now, we see we jacked up the front end of it to get the loader bucket up because we can't move a thing on it. Uh, I got HD coming with a, a Record, hopefully tomorrow, I'm getting it down to their shop. Uh, so I'm going to try to stay in Mayville to repair this to hopefully save some money. But I only have a total of about 28000 in my maintenance budget, and this is going to be, I have no idea. I'm going to be honest, it's like 1995. Uh, but new loaders are about 38000 uh, 38, I wish it was $380,000 So, uh, I think we have no choice. We, we really have to have it. That is, besides all the little things that broke on the uh, fall trucks and so on and so forth, but this is a big one that we we have to get done. So, are we exceeding this life expectancy by too much at this point? It's at ninety-five. I mean, I'm I'm hundred percent behind you. Fix it. Yeah, hundred percent. Without a doubt. But I'm 100% on board that we probably need to start looking towards the future because correct at over 20 years on a wheel loader, especially with the kind of hours that these things probably get put on them, it's, it's like, where you go? What's the hour meter rate on it? You know, I'm sure it's got to be like a way up there. It's a lot. I mean, it's, it's a lot. Um, I did talk to John about maybe some history looking into, and I've talked to other communities looking into a leasing program. Okay. Where we can turn these things over a little more often. A little more often because I mean that's one piece of equipment that's 380, and everything has doubled in the last five years. So you know our snow plows are on some of them are 13. We used to do those in every 10 years, but with no borrowing. And for the last six years, uh, well, you can pay me now, pay me later, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you know when it breaks down, it just it puts everything. Behind you. Yeah. Mean, we lose a loader, we lose a guy because he's building something else, and it just takes a lot longer for us to get there. I ask a question for Mr. Yes, okay. <clears throat> so, Jack, is this the same loader you I think you guys in the garage rebuilt the booms on it and the, the seals on the. Yeah, that was the one that was 34000 to get all that taken care of. Right. And, uh, 
and these things are shot again, or is no, it, this, this is something totally, totally okay. something really different. And I don't, we don't know exactly what it is yet. I mean, they, we can't pinpoint until they really start digging. So those it. repairs that you did are years fine. ago are still fine. They're still fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But like I said, I mean, it could be a hydraulic pump. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm a big loader that's still a lot. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, you'd think when you pay for a car with a starter or something, think of a loader when you're ripping out a whole entire train. Labor is what's going to kill me. But I'm hoping if we stayed, like I said, we stayed in Mayville and then we can help us out there. So. Well, the, the same token, if you got to send it to a bigger shop, they have to. Yeah. So and I, I told you this, and we got to do it. I think they'll be 100% okay with that. If they yeah. can't do it, they can't do it. So, yeah. who, who is HD? HD specialist right up there. Um, um, They're out in the North Bay. Wanted out there. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I know they, they, they do work on big equipment. So, I'm, you know, I'm hoping they can take care of this. Any questions on that one? Okay, do you want to add some? Do you want to put this on an agenda for a discussion for future? Like just to start looking. Probably would be a bad idea, Joe. I think we should probably put it on discussion what we want to plan on doing on some of this equipment. Uh, like I said, if we seriously look into it, I can maybe get some numbers for leasing. For leasing and yeah, I, I would. Um, not to. I don't want to reach the bound of where we're at here, but you know, Brooks, Fabic. Um, can we put this on the next agenda for the next committee meeting? And that gives you about a month to pull some numbers sure. together and see where we're at. Just to yeah. Do we want it on public works or finance right away? Um, I'd probably just throw it on finance because that's probably where we need to be with it. Sure. For the leasing? Yeah, I'll even I'll get some I'll get some prices. Yeah, leasing, purchasing, do yeah. comparison things. I'll get a bunch of things. Specifically for the loader. Yeah. I mean, if, is there, if, if there's anything else that you feel you need to put on there, put on there now because what I see happening is a lot of times we're not prepared for this, and that's why you're still running the 1995. I, I think board. we should throw a dump truck on there to be honest with you. Those two items should have been. Maybe Can you just make it broad and make it um, equipment, equipment for the Department of Public Works? Yep. Didn't we discuss last year? That did they remove? I thought you had a dump truck on there. You just got it. It was a little red one. Yeah, well, it's, it's for a leaf pickup and a brush pickup. Why did you not have a few truck a truck on there in the next four years? Well, we had, remember we had absolutely no borrowing for six years in a row, and when I did mention it, it was we we were not doing that. So, but I I would like to throw it out there now and see where the council is with it now. So. Anything else? Um, salt update. I think salt that's update. Uh, we just got the rest of our salt from last year. For this year, of course, we, we have 500 ton that we got in both of our sheds. Uh, so that once again is a major plus for me because I can keep that salt budget down because that, of course, is increasing a, a lot. So in our budget is only ninety four thousand for salt, and I am able to keep it at a thousand ton because we have leftovers. But someday that could bite me, you know, too. But what, what are we up to a ton now? Are they charging us? I believe it was around seventy nine, <clears throat> which is so. That's why we used to get like eighteen hundred ton, but that should be way over budget. So so far so good with the. That we always have a you know a bunch left over from the year before. So but if that but one time eight or ten years ago when you were a coolman, we used to partner with another community for the salt. Don't do that anymore. They don't do that out of John John Island anymore. Yeah, know. it's still it's a state budget. It's okay. going through the state. All right. We we we're in that one every year because that is one thing we never want to get out of. Because right, yeah. trying to get it from a private company is next to impossible. Not only like that, but I think it was 2013. And it was about two, 200 bucks a ton. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was crazy because they, they yeah. could do it because they could. Yeah. So, that's yeah. yeah, so if we stay in this, because it's it's pretty much every community. 
So <clears throat> I, I don't think we should have that. I I'll stick with what works. Any questions? Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, moving on to garden number seven, monthly park report. He's in Florida. He's in Florida. He gave me a copy of this report. Okay. Uh, John Wilde says, I apologize for not being at the meeting tonight as I'm out of state on a family vacation this week. Buildings report. There was a few weeks this month with no pavilion rental, so I was able to fix the cracked boards on the floor. The official opening of the parks is April 1st, but the facilities have been used by the school district for their sports. The weather looks like it's going to be warming up in the next week or so, and all of our parks will be full with activities. I've been getting buildings ready to open and have needed to repair inside damage. The restrooms at Fireman's Field had new urinals installed late last fall with the floor being jackhammered out. That concrete work will be finished in the next week or two when it warms up. Those bathrooms will be ready to use at that point. For grounds report, as the weather has allowed us to get into the parks, we've been cleaning up the grounds. Baseball field at Fireman's Park has had the start of an upgrade last fall and will be completed as soon as the weather warms and we can get equipment on the field. The high school varsity baseball team will be using Feeler South Baseball Field as its home field until Fireman's Field is completed. <clears throat> I turned on all three scoreboards at Tyler and found that all but one remote that operates these scoreboards has not been working. I contacted the scoreboard company to order new remotes, and of course, they don't make those remotes anymore. The fix they suggested was an upgrade kit, which cost $2,300 per scoreboard, and we have three scoreboards at the park. I'm trying to find another fix as we cannot afford to spend that much on scoreboards. We do have one working remote that can operate any one scoreboard at a time. And the kayak shed is moving and will hopefully be completed in four to six weeks. Senior center report. The building's been used by many organizations for meetings this last month. The seniors have stayed busy with cards and bingo. We finalized the details of their next bus trip to Memories Theater in Fort Washington. And that is John's report. Thank you. Yeah, something. Um, the Easter uh, basket hunt is this Saturday. Um, just out there for the public to hear a reminder at Foster Park. <clears throat> okay. Any questions? Okay, moving on to item number. Eight action items discussed with possible action amendment to City of Mayville 397.70 regarding parking during snow events and snow emergency. This is and this is originally what we had. Uh, I about three years ago, and I was not for it then, and I'm really totally against it now. So I am the one that brought it to the committee for folks. It was me because I'm, I think I'm holding this stuff. Uh, I do believe we should go back to our old parking where we cannot park on city streets from 1 to 6 a.m. I think we have the, I did save the old signs. <laughs> What what are the what what are the rules now that you're now they are allowing people to park overnight anytime unless there's a snow event. As you can see from the pictures underneath that, these snow events are not working. And uh, it costs us a lot more time because we have to go back because cars are parked all over the road. There's some streets we honestly can't even get down with our wing and our quad. Yeah. And it's very dangerous. I mean, it's hard for our drivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, you convinced me. Um, so is it year round or is this just during this the This is from the okay. first of the April. Okay, okay. Makes perfect sense. And we are the only community that does not have this in place. So I have to start with myself. What 
Can you tell me at uh, what time of year, or is this forbidden? This would be from December first okay. to the breakfast. And it would be from one a.m. to six a.m. So after six a.m., you can park in the road all day if you want. It's, this is like our main calling <laughs> time. Uh, I, I mean, the pictures you have are they recent? Yes, they that was from? Thursday snowstorm. I took those on my way in. So currently, September 1st to April 1st, we are at right now. Because we're not at all. We have no restriction. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be, it used to be. Yes. It, so it would be December 1st to April 1st, 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. And I do have the old signs, so I didn't cost them anything for that. I mean, it's not fair to us, it's not fair to our police department. Uh, I think they have better things to do than write out. 75 tickets in a night time. Is that a correct number? Well, it varies. They don't even get them all most of the time because they... the number of tickets vary with how many we write for each snow event, all depending on the circumstances. So the officers are busy or a lot of very busy. Yeah. So do we know whether are, you, are the tickets that you are writing are they are they all repeat offenders? So if I'm going to compare the citations with the enforcement actions that was taken to how it used to be when we used to close the streets from you know one day to the next for the entire winter, compared to how it is now. Um, it is quite a bit difficult. You write more tickets now. Um, in the past, under the old ordinance, generally we would send out warnings um, initially a, a week or two before the ordinance took effect for the winter. And we would put them on vehicles or park them in the street and say, you know, that, and explain them the ordinance and that there's no parking on the city street from one, you know, from for the winter. Um, now, we don't have that, and what it, what it comes it comes down to is we have, we have quite a few tickets that we write for every snow event, and the problem that the police department sees with it it's not that we won't go and enforce the parking because we that's our job, it's that the definition of what a snow event is. There's some confusion initially that it depends on a certain amount of accumulation, one inch of accumulation. I've heard that a hundred times. That's not in the ordinance. It just you know just a snow event where the DPW director um, decides that you know a plow needs to be used to clear the streets. And what we run into is is we'll get a snow event at six o'clock at night, and the you know the snow plows will go out and at seven o'clock at night clear the roads. They're done by midnight, one o'clock, and then we'll have people park in the streets. And there'll be areas that they can't get to or whatever because of vehicles, and people don't know if the snow event still exists or if it doesn't. Because per, per the ordinance, once the the roads are cleared from curb to curb, then you can park again. But with all the vehicles that are parked there all the time now, without with this new ordinance, it's very difficult for them to clear from curb to curb, and it's just a it just revol keeps you know revolving around. When the snow event occurred, when the snow plows actually went out, and then we have issues where no snow was forecasted, and then it snows at night, and then the snow plows go out at five o'clock, and then we issue tickets, and we don't have a good way to communicate to the public that a snow event is occurring, or we didn't know a snow event is occurring. And if citation gets issued, then they come in and complain, and it's just there's no good answer to you know. The perfect storm, if you will, of when we issue tickets and when we don't. Where before it was clear cut, you can't park in the street from one day to the next day. And we always took into account if it's a bright, sunny month and we don't have any snow, we didn't go around and force parking vigorously. If we knew there was going to be snow or that, then we would. You know, if there was holidays or people had a large amount of families over, it was in the ordinance that they could call us, and people did. And we would give them. 
permission to park in the street for whatever time they needed. And it was a lot more positive experience, I'll say, for the police department standpoint with people in comparison to how it is now. And I end up avoiding quite a few tickets right now just because I don't feel comfortable with sometimes, you know, the officers going out there, they're expected to write parking tickets, you know, regardless of the politics around it or when the snow occurred or dinged or whatever. And then I, as the chief, have to decide whether that ticket was written, you know, you know, based on the circumstances, you know, where the person actually violated the law. And I end up, you know, avoiding quite a few tickets just because of when the snow event occurred or the specific street, and how it was cleared, or how many vehicles were parked out there. And it just has made it difficult um, for that. So in solution to that, you know, I don't want to come up here and just to, you know, whine about having to do parking, but from a solution standpoint, if we could communicate better to people when these snow events occur and when they are not to park on the street, that would solve the problem. But there, and that creates another problem when these snow events do occur, they occur on a Friday night or a Saturday or a Sunday. We don't, there's not staff here or an effective way to communicate to people that they can't park on the streets to begin with. Um, and I understand that it's a convenience thing um, to be able to allow people to park on the street during the winter. And I know there's you know a lot of families that don't have sufficient parking or enough parking. You know, you know, everyone's circumstance is different. And and we take that into consideration. But from a true enforcement standpoint, to do it effectively, efficiently, and I think with you know, uh, you know, the idea of making sure that these guys are safe and have room to make the streets that safe. In my opinion, the best way is to go back to the old ordinance. Um, it's not the perfect way. Um, I'm sure there's a number of different ways that you could do it. Um, but uh, this way is confusing for people. It's difficult to enforce for the police department itself. Um, and, you know, the snowfall drivers have a tough time with for interpretation. What's that? The rule. Yeah, and that brings up another point. The interpretation of the rule and the ordinance itself is difficult to even explain, even if you read it, you got to read it a couple of times. Um, and when people from out of town come into town, they don't know the parking rules or regulations. And very few people take the time to come to City Hall or to the police department to have those regulations explained. Where, like most communities, um, there's a sign up at the edge of town that explains you can't park from this date to that date. It's clear, it's simple to understand, and people from outside the community know what those parking regulations are. And those parking regulations are also very consistent with all the other communities around us. So it makes it much more difficult, a lot easier for especially people from out of town to know when and when you can't park on the street. These are the originals. I can have you take a look at these. This was no, I remember. That is one that we back in December 1st to April 1st. Like I said, it's from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. Plus, there was one on the edge of town all the time. We have, we have there before. Everywhere you come into town, we'll have a parking. There are some problem areas in the city that I am concerned about that really could use this parking the way it is right now. Unfortunately, we can't pick and choose those areas, but I do want everyone to keep that in mind. Um, and if anybody wants to make any comments, now's the time. Anybody? Oh, I would love to. If you guys do a motion, I'll speak to that. I don't know if you can do that. Oh, sure. Actually, you can. Yeah, public comments already happened. Right? Okay. Uh, but yeah, I suppose by unanimous consent, the council could or the committee could allow public comments. You skipped them. That would be up to the chairman, not up to me. I have no problem listening to what people have to say. I don't either. Well, I will. There's only two of us in the court. 
It's a quorum. It would be unanimous. It's unanimous for what we have here. All right. So. Do you want me to come away to allow? Oh, yeah. oh, wait, wait, are you right. talking about this issue or another one? Just this issue. Okay. Yep. But I'm just asking. No, no, you're good. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> as the I'm officer pointed out, there could be, as the officer pointed out, there is a uh, issue. I'm sorry, can issue. you pitch your name for the moment? Oh, yeah, sure. Joe Holm at 271 South Main Street. Thank you. So, uh, as the officer pointed out, there is many issues on Main Street. So, I'm going to give you an example. You're going to pass the ordinance. Great. So what's going to end up happening is everyone on Main Street has got issues on South Main with parking, trying to get out, trying to do all kinds of stuff. Now, here's the issue. They are not going to ticket a single car except for mine or someone else's that lives there. They won't ticket all the factory workers or anything. So right there, I'm going to say that it's going to be unfair because that has always been that way. So what are we going to do with the factory workers? The next thing is... You know how hard it is to uh, try to be able to move cars out and stuff like that on Maine. So a lot of you guys don't know these cars park there. It's they're not four feet away from the law. Law state supposed to be four feet away. No, they butt up right next to your curb and stuff like that. It is almost impossible to be able to deal with this particular ordinance if you want to change it on South Maine. So, and I would uh, attest that it's just, it's difficult to even park you there. So a lot of times what you do is you park your vehicle there because you got other vehicles going in and out of your driveway. So it's just too dangerous going in and out. So every time, and I'm going to tell you, they are not going to take it a single person that works at that factory. So what about the factory workers that get there at two in the morning? That's what time they get there. I have to actually get up at that time and try to beat them out in order just to snow plow my driveway. So otherwise I have no way to even plow my driveway so that is how bad it is during that uh, particular time because you got to get your cars out on the road but you can't even get onto the road and that's because of further issues before with the bike lanes and things like that that they uh, had to put in so they got rid of the parking on both sides and that's what ended up happening it's just created a monster on south main um i would say that why not uh you either enforce this right here, you don't, which means all those workers need to not be there from two in the morning till 6 a.m. You either do it, you either enforce a law or you don't. I, and that's where I'm at with it. Now, why not do something different, which is maybe you do it for the entire city, but you leave South Maine alone. You say parking is enforced in the entire city, but due to the unique situation of South Maine, Maybe you exclude that particular area right there just because of the uniqueness of that particular part of the city and the factory workers, which would be a great compromise, I think, for the factory and Department of Public Works. And Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, we're going to listen to Ryan. What do you think, Ryan? Follow. Can we eliminate? I think things? this is a good example of following the agenda. And South Main Street wasn't on the agenda for tonight. And I, I don't doubt that there are problems on South Main Street. Um, and it's a unique parking area, just like a number of other streets in the city that are listed specifically in the ordinance of certain areas where you can park overnight certain areas where you can't park overnight. Um, and it's and, and, and South Main Street is just an example of that where the police department and the city itself, you know, has to use a certain amount of discretion um, to try to make one homeowners happy, the business owners happy, the people traveling on the street happy, people maintaining and clearing the streets happy those walking on the sidewalks and using the bike lane happy. Um, it's one of those situations where you try to create some type of a balance so that everybody can get done what they need to throughout the day. And there are just some times where that's not possible. Um, we do our best. Um, we don't pick and choose who we write tickets to. We only push it and, and, and write those tickets, you know, based on the violation. Um, have officers made mistakes in the past? Certainly. 
um, they're human, and, you know, and you know, to specifically to South Maine, I can't think of anything on top of my head where there's been a recent problem that I'm aware of, but uh, um, um, it, it goes to show the complexity of what the parking ordinance is and the parking in the city is. Um, there are hundreds of different parking zones that have different rules, um, and uh, the officers go out and try to, you know, enforce that when they can. Um, but even with the winter parking, an example, um, when the officers are busy, winter parking isn't happening because they don't have the time for it, you know. And um, again, like the ordinance that basically says from one day to the next day, it makes it simple so people understand it. And there's just, there's just a clear understanding, I think, throughout the community of what, what's expected in the wintertime so we can get streets cleared. Um, and, and, and South Maine is no different. You know that those workers are there working at that factory because that factory does not have a parking lot. Um, I don't have the ability to put a parking lot there. I wish I did. Um, and we've talked about this many times, and I feel for the homeowners there because it is a problem. Um, and when you know when someone calls and complains, or when there's an issue, they come to the parking. We put every effort into trying to you know solve it, but they change employees like every other factory does, and things change regularly and you know it's not something that we that we can stay on top of just because of work so um, well my question is can we eliminate south maine in this south maine as far as the winter it, parking yeah certainly but i don't know that that's going to solve the problem you know i mean if we allow if we allow those people to park their way the way it is because they're there for work yeah you know just like we allow people to park in the municipal lots if they're working, you know, in the bars, or we allow people to park in certain areas in town, which is generally a violation of the city parking ordinance. But we take and we try to take everything into consideration before we go and just you know take enforcement action. Um, and a lot of these parking ordinances are, are you know, it's just that. I mean, they they may state one thing in the ordinance, but seasonally, you know, based on the demands and the needs and the use of the road, that changes and. We try to stay on top of that the best that we can to try to make everybody that uses, you know, the area happy. So, well, you're talking. Can I talk? Yes, you may. Sorry. Um, you're right. It's a complex situation. We have several ordinances that cover this. One of them is if you have a business, as far as I know, it's the only business that doesn't have off-street parking. The ordinance requires you to have it or have parking, municipal parking nearby, which there is. There's municipal parking over behind the Legion um, that people could walk to. Um, we don't have any other third shift, second shift, third shift businesses that require their employees to park. They only allow them street parking, so we don't have that. In fact, we've bent backwards by giving them the little turnaround that used to be illegal by the bridge there, and we just don't enforce that anymore. So they use that as their own uh, uh, parking lot. So we do bend over, but the fact is we have an ordinance that says if you have a business, you must have parking for your employees, and that one doesn't. Uh, and we have other entities that when there's a snow event, guess what they do? Like the Hot One Hotel or the schools, they close. If it's snowing and our employees don't have a place to park because there's an ordinance against it, they're not open for that shift. And that, that's a solution too. But uh, Mr. Holman, however unusual it might be, he has does have a point. You're gonna enforce the ordinance everywhere but here, or you're gonna look the other way or you're going to what? The hotel had the same problem. We required them to buy five municipal parking permits, whether they use them or not, behind the library. And uh, and but that's a no ticket zone there on on whatever that is, Street uh, William Street. William Street. Yeah, we just ignore. We don't ticket people because they're hotel guests, and we don't want to cause a problem. And there are several parking lots nearby. So I don't know. It's a sticky problem. Some of it could be solved. You hit on it with communication. We could have a, like the county does, we could have a, and the school board does, we could have a call list you could sign up for. 
And if you don't know what a snow event looks like, we could tell you if you call, or we could call you. It's a circular thing. We don't have to do it. That's possible. But I don't have the situation out by me. I have I have two acres to park on. But my and my constituents don't have problems with city parking. But in general, the city does. They have a lot of older homes that don't have enough parking. And uh, let's face it, the people pay for the streets and the curbs and the gutters, and they'd like to park on them when they need to. And if we can find a way to communicate better, maybe there's a way we can solve it. If not, we can make a, a rule that the 11 times it snows between April 1st or backward to November, November to April 1st, uh, <coughs> grass is growing, birds are chirping, and nobody's parking because it could snow. Well, it will snow 11 times if we can't tell them, if they can't figure it out. Didn't work too bad the first two years, but in the last three or four that it became a big mess. And I think if I remember right, when the last mayor put it up there for discussion, the council voted to change it based on the fact that Beaver Dam changed it. And I thought, and this Beaver Dam says the on this table says Beaver Dam doesn't do that anymore. But I don't mind whether what the committee commission. The common council does doesn't affect me or my ward essentially, but it is the people's. They, the streets belong to the people, and if they're paying for them, we should find a way that they can park on them with some accommodation. And as far as uh, as far as what Mr. Holman raised, that's selective enforcement. I don't know where you go with that. The snow events are not work. I mean, the snow event does not work. It says one inch of snow or or one inch of snow and they're supposed to be off the streets. Trust me, it doesn't work. It's okay. not working, period. It's making our lives miserable because we're out there at one o'clock in the morning. No, I, I, I agree. You can't get and, by the cars. And if we hit the cars, whose fault is that going to be? You're not supposed to be on the street. So if we run into them, say we have an ice storm. Okay. And we're coming down sideways, and we have cars parked all over the streets. If we bounce off three of them, are are we liable for them? Just telling you how the ordinance came about. The ordinance was put in for a reason, Bob, and you remember as well as I do. So someone could park out on the street, right? Because they have too many cars in their car. I we tried it; it failed. It did not work. And I'm just saying we have a problem. Where cars, uh, vehicles coming down the street in an ice storm, and we start bouncing off cars, I want to know who's going to take care of it. I have two new drivers coming in here. I can tell you this: this is the only time I'm tickled to death not to be on this committee. <laughs> That's for them to decide. The recommended council. I I would like to recommend it to council, so everybody can weigh in, and maybe it would give us a little time to think about options. Solution, some solution. Yeah. yeah. Have we ever tried? Yeah. yeah. Not all streets have, they have, some have, you can only park on one side. Um, why, do we, why do we feel like we have to be the only community that is not going to set up an ordinance? I mean, you have the slip in front of you. Every one of these has no parking from 1 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 2 p.m., 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Every single community has it but us. Is it, is it true that Beaver Dam had it at one point? Not that I'm aware. I checked the website today. That's the thing. Beaver Dam has something where you can buy a parking permit to park on the street. But if it snows at all, you're still getting a ticket. So I don't know what they pay for their parking permit. But once it snows, 
they need to have the car off the road. So now they're not only paying for a parking permit, but they're also getting a ticket. Which doesn't really solve a problem. No, it doesn't. You're right. If I can make a comment. Yes, you may. Uh, to Jack's point, trying to get the cars off the streets, but they can block the streets. And I mean, to me, it's that simple. How do we do it? it? But there is an issue down where Joe lives. I totally, I totally get it. Right. Joe, well, Joe has there's, issues. there's issues throughout the city. I mean, but what's, the, what's, the, most, the, what's the most effective way to get the most cars off the street so they can block the streets? Like and, and there's going to be exceptions. There will be. Again, can we eliminate having that area down at that end where he lives? Ryan? Because it is, it's. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a problem. Yeah. I, I, you know, um, but then that, you know, we can solve that problem by not allowing people to park there. Overnight, but then we need to figure out where we can have them park so they can go to work. You know, I noticed today driving around looking at the snow <laughs> that there is a shuttle bus now from uh, old fashioned foods that was taking workers, picking up workers and dropping them off. I have no idea what that's about, but if they can do that, they can take workers to park. To the, where they park their cars, I would imagine that they use municipal parking lot. How full is our municipal parking lot when on those defense deck? Uh behind Nap C is the twelve. Okay. Behind Nap is yeah, the it's about half. Yeah. About half. What about behind the Legion? Is there spaces yeah. there? Yeah. I mean there is a way if you talk to <coughs> the lady who own the people who own that factory. I mean we are we are allowing them some latitude on uh, requirements for off-street parking. Maybe they could work something out. I know, right. you know, uh, I mean, the library, which I'm extremely familiar with, when it snows and there's a snow event, they close the library. So and there's no parking, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, Would you be okay with, if I called the owner of Old Fashioned Cheese so we can, we know there's a problem down there. Would you allow me to call her and try to work with her at least? Because I can see both sides here. They're very important to me. And um, I just don't want to wreck people's jobs or anything like that. We, we do have plenty of parking behind Napa or behind I mean, it's what is it? Two blocks? Yeah. So right. I don't know behind uh, behind Old Fashioned and School Street. I don't know, but that would be parked. There is no parking there. They there have isn't. There. But if we could change, maybe we could change that and people's park facing north and they come to the back door. They want it to be on South Union. Well, how's he going to blow that? That's a single lane street. Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> we've got so much space. You never know this all. What Brian's talking about, and we can remember, there are no homes on that side of the street. Yeah. Right. No, there's not. No. So, well, there are two further down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Toward, toward, toward that end, but we could put no parking from here to. Right. Yeah. And I don't know. Are there stairs going down? Does anybody recall? Yeah, there, are, yeah. there are stairs. Yeah, I don't know what's back there for access. To yeah, me either. I if I mean, it's just, it's one of the, it's an option. I don't think. At one time they were buying, when we raised this eight, nine years right. ago, they were going to buy the lot next door and then yeah. it's a parking. Right. Yeah. And that was the way they were going to solve it. Yeah, there we, are ways that we, right. they can work with it. But and, and we run into, you know, I find it difficult to someone that's going to show up at 5 a.m. to go to work, gets a parking ticket between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. on cell phone. <laughs> And that's so you know all these cars get there at that time, or they're working there overnight or whatever. And I just someone who's just trying to go to work and there's no other parking gets a parking ticket. I I have a tough time right now. It is what it is. Remember how this all started? There was a little silver car parked across from the hotel, 
and they kept flying around and they thought it was funny. This was eight, nine years ago, and then they built a pyramid of snow on top of it and around it. <laughs> Turned out the guy had passed away. It was kind of embarrassing for the city. That, uh, and that car eventually had to be removed. And then we thought it wasn't so funny to keep piling snow on top of cars that couldn't move up the street. So the former mayor decided to check into better ways to deal with the public. And this is what came about. So in Joe's case, he's had it where the bumpers front or back were actually extending into his driveway where he had to go bang on neighbors' doors at right. odd times so he could get out of his driveway. So it, it really is a big problem down there. But on the other hand, the neighbor who is next to that factory might just consider <coughs> selling now. So if, if you guys would just give me a little time, let me make some phone calls because maybe we can we can work this out. Yeah, well, Jack wants to change the order. Well, I don't, I'm not on the committee. But, but, I, yeah, I do have a question. I mean, when okay, so when you're going through areas that are narrower and maybe you have a car parked there, are you not able to get through because you have your wing down, or do we lift the wing to go past? Well, well you don't have a choice, so you have to lift the wing. Great. Which then we have to come back another time after everything's done, and we have to redo stuff over and over and over. Let's say I added cost of wear and tear and city equipment, which is good. Right. It is definitely added cost because it's probably going to be over time. Okay. Do, we, do I have a motion to send this to council? I, I think I did already, but okay. I'll do it again. I make a motion to send to council. Okay. I will second that motion. Um, with With saying that we should try to find <coughs> different ways, if possible, you know, everybody think, you know, instead of just going one way or the other, let's try and figure something out that's good for everybody. Do you want that that motion amended or just kind of commentary to look at all the options? I, I amend it. Okay, so to because you motion to send it to council. Okay, <clears throat> so are you seconding? Because I don't think you can amend her okay. motion. What's there to amend? Right. What are we amending? Because you can still discuss it in Cotton County. Yeah. Okay, so you don't well, need the extra sure verbiage yet. Okay. Just as it's on there to look at revising it. Without over, yeah. Yes, to your point, you want to make sure you're able to look at all the options. Correct. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so uh, motion made, seconded. Uh, let's go on the council. Do I have? All, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 And I believe that moves us to adjournment. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. I will second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Adjourn at 743. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I hope we can resolve this soon. All right, what's next? On Personnel. The, uh, that's, you can keep that silly thing. A lot of it to get Great. Personnel meeting at 7.43 p.m. Roll call. Alder Person <coughs> Kim Olson. Here. Alder person Jack Abbott. Here. And Alder person Joseph Reese is not here. Can I get approval of the minutes for the February 27th personnel committee? I will make a motion to approve the minutes for the February 27th. 
27 personnel committee meeting. And I'll second. And may I get an approval to the February 27th personnel committee special meeting of the whole meeting? Minutes. I will second the motion <laughs> to approve minutes for the February 27th special personnel committee meeting of the whole. Okay. Uh, just to move on, I'll, I'll second that. Um, any discussion pertaining to this? I think this is the one where uh, I question the one, the special meeting of the whole minutes. I got to find out what it was I wanted to talk about. Was this that closed session one? I apologize, it's been a lot lately. Yeah. <laughs> well, then we'll, you know. Uh, that was the one uh, when the closed session was interviewing our hired deputy clerk. Now it was that meeting. Oh, okay. Not right. the common council one. Okay. There was another one I, I'm questioning. But if it's not this one, then we can move on. Okay. All right. Getting back to the next items. <clears throat> Any citizens' comments pertaining to personnel? Seeing none, number four, action items discussed with possible action, updating the employee handbook. So, I have an idea. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this the public safety meeting? No, no, personnel. No, personnel. personnel. Okay. Okay, so um, I've been doing some homework at home about the employee handbook, but I do think that maybe the chairs or certain committees should meet and that we go over this instead of... <clears throat> You know, keep bringing it keeping up it up because I do have some ideas. I do have some things I would like to address, and I think we should nip this in the bud the sooner the better. So, if you guys could look at something that would work for all of us, maybe we can get together, like um, me, you, and whoever else wants to be part of this employee handbook thing. You want you you want department heads as well as a whole? Yeah, yeah, I, or you know whoever can make it. Um, I I would like the more input from the council, the better. Ideas are great. Um, do I have to look at how to post that? Because if there's so many of you together, that creates a forum for the public. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And can I say something? Absolutely. Absolutely. It seems pretty important to me to include the department heads in, in what it is you're proposing and give them an opportunity to review. Um, yeah, I do too. It'll be a beautiful part of whatever it is you're proposing. Yeah. I think it should be maybe require them or ask them to uh, come up with ideas and bring them to a meeting. Yeah. Uh, we did then, compile the list that we had sent out. That was, I had reached out to the department heads, and that list was provided and should be in the agenda attachment. So we do have. You have that already. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Never mind. Mm -hmm. All right. Never mind. Never and mind. then I have, I have some things that I would like to clarify or clean up a little bit in the handbook uh, to be more specific. Um, Before you do that, can I make a comment? Sure. Um, as far as the history goes, mm -hmm. this, six years ago, we completed five years of this being on the personnel agenda every <clears throat> single month for all five years. That was Dave Passbrick was the personality guy. And uh, we had a workshop 
but it took five years to make these changes that the changes that were made and after they were made the last thing we did by motion was to say that this must be updated every two to three years which we haven't been doing so uh, this is a big major undertaking here that you're doing i just want to know well we missed two to three years as yeah, well so okay. but um is this something we need to set up a meeting on its very own you think I think typically, kind of like what Bob was saying, it takes, it's almost like a, a year progression because it gets so in depth that you take one topic, you know, and then you would maybe meet or discuss that one topic, come up with your ideas, but then you also have to run it past legal and make sure what you're coming up with, you know, still falls <coughs> under the different statutes. So it's, yeah. So but, what the workshop that he's speaking of. Yeah. How many? Saying? How many people can we can be two council members or is two men on the same committee or how many can we be in a workshop if it's an issue? Well you can have you can't have well, with a personnel committee if you make it as a personnel committee of whole you can get away with three. Mm -hmm. But if it's just the personnel committee you can't even have two that one. <laughs> That's a quorum. Yeah. So you'd have to do a workshop made up of a council like one or two council members plus the different the different one or two department department heads, you know, and a lot of them can be done by by uh, memos and so forth and so on. A lot of it the reason it was done the first time was because I don't know if anybody remembers I hate being old. The Act 10 came about and all ruined all the union stuff and everything else and they had to change all the book and the uh, we had to change all the benefit programs and all the other stuff. So it was very important to update a personnel manual, plus it defined people's roles and and who answers to who and so forth and so on. It's a it's a kind of it's a complex undertaking, but people you have to first hard part, in my opinion, is you have to review what you have and see what needs to be updated or what what is out of date and what. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, just besides department heads, a lot of these people here tonight are the ones that came up with a lot of these ideas and suggestions, and they're the best at explaining them and the ones that are working and knowing why things work and don't work. Um, I think it would be falling short to go with just department heads here, and I think everybody's opinion needs to be heard. Well, you mean employees and department heads? Yeah, I would say that. I thought they were all here for the previous thing. No. <laughs> the orange shirts, though. Oh, um, yes. I, employees have to have a way of, and if their department had chooses to let the employees have input, that would be. But I'm not on the personnel committee. I'm just telling you what happened the last time. Is is there anything specifically that you feel needs to be changed or amended? Um, I I sure would like to know about it. Okay. And and um, is there anybody who would like to speak? Come on up and speak. It's like, or uh, let us know. Uh, sure, I guess I'll do. In light, once in very well. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. So I guess you're looking at what we're thinking has to get changed on our end. Is that what you want to know? Well, first, can I get your name? I yeah, Tim Bouchard works on water utility. Hi. Oh, yeah. Uh, water, wastewater. Is there, this is our whole host of our crew. Hi, guys. The UPW Thank you. representation here. Uh, some of this is data that's not just for us. It's for it's for the city as a whole, for our younger guys, not just to get things changed, also for retention. Uh, we, we, we've been, our, our area especially, got hit hard. All new guys. Everybody's different. Okay. Less than what? Three years? Seven months. Seven months, couple years, couple years, couple years. Welcome. Constantly get cold calls to go move up. It's and it's a big demand. Not a lot of guy likes to play in wastewater. Not a fun job. Guys are retiring daily. So it's not only getting guys here, getting experienced guys here and retaining them is what we're looking at. Uh, the big one for, for me myself is is I was in a sick time. Going 20 years of service before you did anything, no, no extreme. A little. 
low extreme, fine if you prorate it down, whatever it may be. Um, I, I found we don't have a union anymore, but I've seen previous contracts and things we did. They used to get longevity pay, they used to get this, they used to get that. A lot of sacrifices were made, but we got to keep up in today's world where places are giving this stuff back and keeping employees. Everybody's looking for employees who pays the best, who does the best, is going to get them to stay there. Um, Sip time, also being able to donate it to fellow employees and donating vacation to fellow employees in hard times. Uh, somebody's got an illness in their immediate family and I got a bunch of sick time. Here, take time of my days and take care of your family. Uh, somebody's got an in-law thing outside their family or a close personal friend, I can't give them sick time to help that person, but I can give them some of my vacation. Let me donate my time to help someone out, keep everybody happy. We all, we see each other, I see these guys probably more than my family. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you do what you gotta do. That, that's always a big thing. Anything else you guys remember? Uh, Thank you, guys. Mike right brought up vacation time. We wanna hire a guy in that's experienced. We got young guys. It'd be nice to bring a guy in with 15, 20 years. He's got 30 days of vacation. You're gonna tell him it's done? We gotta change that handbook a little bit that we can prorate him and bring him in at. We can give you, we can't give you a 30, but we can give you three weeks. We got to get you in. You got to offer him something. As I say, you got to dangle the carrot to get the guy here. Um, anything else we were talking about besides that? Uh, Our handbook doesn't allow for, um, because you know, leave. I think we're the only one that is a minor one, but we exclude aunts and uncles. Aunts and uncles is one that doesn't go on that far, you know, just a day. Uh, there's other things. Anybody think of anything? The sick time was the big thing uh, we were talking to. Uh, for the new guys especially, I know we can comp time hours. We go to an odd number of like 50 hours. Divide eight into 50. Don't come out so well. Why don't you make it 80 hours of comp time, give it 10 days, which is also beneficial to the city. But we'll just charge you overtime. They're going to pay me out at straight time. You know, also make it, you know, up to supervisor or whatever department had discretion. So you got 10 days and you're going to say, well, I'm going to take 10 days off. No, the partner has no, you're not taking 10 days off. You got to give and take, grease the squeaky wheel a little bit, keep them happy. You know, that, that's the thing. Um, Comp time was another one, like the industry standard, I would say, like your sick time. Most municipalities are 120 days. And then you can prorate down from that, <clears throat> depending on how long the guy's here, you know. You got to come up with things. We talked to numerous employees. Mike came from Brookfield, right? Yeah. Brookfield, Beloit. Brian was in a local community. George and Mike are new. I came from another one. Just a combination of different things we see and what other guys offer. And that's just to get them here and keep them here. Get guys you like, you got to, everybody wants to use the bathroom and take a shower. Yeah. But it's not just for us. It's for all employees as a city of old. Your good guy's good equipment operator, great guy. Replace him is going to be hard. Well, you might have to get a guy who's going to be a little younger, say he's 48 years old. He'll never get a 20 year mark to get any benefit of a set time at all. You know, we're just need some cross training. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, I guess yeah. that's why I talk. You got to see what's behind the lines. For us, DPW guys, any guys that run CDN and workings in the city, there's a lot that goes on. And, I tell you, there's a lot of days I'm ready to just go drive fork with punch in and punch out. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. And the pay is the same and the benefits might beat me up. So I'm going to be brutally honest with you. You know, you hear it on the radio. Oh, we don't pay insurance premiums. We don't do this. We don't do that. I like my job. I like what I do. I like the guys I work with. Well, again, you're, you, you guys are a major hub to our city. And, and we do want to retain you. So it's yes, so um, just... For future guys. Yeah. So, uh, Nicole, Courtney, yeah. and the rest of us, uh, yeah, I, I'm game to keeping our employees happy. And I, bottom line, I guess, bottom line at the same time, if I can add, I feel like by not doing something for that sick time, you know, the payout or it covers your insurance or whatever when you retire is the issue. I, I'm going to want him here those last crucial months to train somebody. Our current handbook kind of puts it as encouraging to him to leave and use up all his sick time. So, I mean, 
I guess if I were him and you want to use your time the last three years you're here, you can be sick for two days a week, and I'm not getting much training out of that either. So we're kind of creating a bad employee the way that this right. is written. So. Setting up for failure. Yeah. yeah. So I do have a question uh, real quick. Now, this transfer transferable um, vacation, that's a new one on me. Have you ever seen it done before? Yeah, so it's nothing system. new. Yeah. My wife does it a lot. She works at a hospital in Fond du Lac. Girl's niece was in Boston, brain tumor, whatever. So all the girls in the office, all of them, I shouldn't say girl, the people in the office, uh, my wife personally gave her 10 days. The Maybe. woman took this vacation and went out to Boston for like two months. Hey, it is transferred at the employer that donates it at their rate of pay. If mine is different from his, if he gets five days, that person would get five days at his rate, five days a month. Any incremental you want. That's a good uh, idea. And they could and they could also, if it was a personal, you had a uh, long-term health benefit, you could donate your sick time to that person. Say they were going to be off of work seven months. Well, they don't have that much sick time. Everybody get together. Everybody give them 10 days. The person would never miss a beat in their pay, get better, and come back because we need you. Yeah, we're good at the county. They did it too. Fund County does it as well. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a new one on me. I don't see a downside to it. I don't either. I mean, you got to pay the vacation either way, no matter yeah. who it goes to. Vacation or sick time, I'd be yeah. willing to give it up to help a fellow employee. Yes, I think absolutely. a lot of people would. That's just the way it works, you know? Absolutely. So, All right, so then I will be in touch with Courtney or whoever wants to talk to me, and we'll work on that. Yeah. And, and thank you for speaking on behalf of the yeah. others. Yeah. I appreciate no it. You bet. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Could I add something? In here? Yes, please do. I would say my biggest concern since I've been here is that we do not have HR payroll. Mm -hmm. I will say it again. I was not necessarily hired as HR payroll. Okay. Annie was not hired as HR of payroll. Nobody knows who to go to. Nobody okay. has specific training. We we couple it together the best we can, but we, we don't have the training or the background in it. And a lot of people usually have a dedicated position to HR because it is so extensive and comprehensive. And it requires specialty training and knowledge of the law. Um, I mean, I've been spending three months Cleaning up people's employee files. Yeah. They said all these new guys, including myself, I've been in seven years, orientation. They have no idea what the benefits are. They might give you a card and tell you to call you. I don't know. Ooh. I thought maybe you're volunteering to be. No. <laughs> but we don't know. We don't know what you're entitled to. I mean, I've took your brain with retirement a few times and just don't know where to go or how to change things. There's just zero direction for, for anyone for benefit-wise or anything. And you're absolutely right. Thanks for bringing it up. Good point. So, so even a part-time paid HR person or someone who could do HR and something else is something to consider as we move forward okay. with this. It's, it's way too important and too extensive to just add it on to somebody's job description. It's, it's so we're going to start there up. first, I guess, then work on these other things. Um, is there anything else anybody would like to add? I have some really little tiny ones. There's an eyewear dollar amount, like this one's not a big deal, but there's like $150 like eyewear, safety eyewear. I don't think in today's dollars that's even close to what glasses cost these days. Um, that might be a little research project, but I think it's 150 reimbursement. It's not gonna, not gonna cover safety glasses. Um, and the front cover, I think of the handbook itself that we all signed and nobody probably read. If you read through it, I think that's a little intimidating when you walk in the door, but it says that, um, I understand that the contents of this manual and my compensation and benefits may be changed by the city at any time with or without notice to the extent permitted by law. That was kind of scary right wow. off the bat. When you that is scary. Yeah. Right <laughs> they all sign that when they start. Yeah. Can I ask a question? What, you, what do you people do kind of on eyewear? Uh, uh, there's a reimbursement <laughs> amount for safety eyewear when required and necessary, depending on your position. 
Um, I think the reimbursement amount is like $150. Don't quote me on that. But I don't think that's a, um, a relevant cost for eyewear anymore. I don't think. Do, so. do we have a contract with, uh, with, with somebody that does glasses? Because I know the company I work for provides safety glasses, and, and I don't think it's anywhere near $150. No, like the, the prescription? Um, yeah, I'm talking, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you have a prescription already. I mean, generally, it puts your prescription on a pair of safety glasses is right around the hundred, hundred and fifty dollar range right now. I just bought two pairs of glasses. My dad, I might my be dad before he left for six hundred dollars. Yeah, if you're well, if you don't have a prescription and you need an eye yeah. examination and all of that, I'm sure it'll cost a lot. Most people will have prescription glasses already done. It's like a minor minor one, but something to just reevaluate like today's cost and all that. We have had occasion where designer glasses cost us six hundred dollars a pair. If you're not for that, <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> hey, um, I'll be in touch with you so we can address this, and I will talk to Annie and Andy more about. Getting some HR to take care of these these bigger issues. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to keep on with the employee handbook until we can get her done. So so keep rolling it over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I've gone through it and found a few things. And as I'm looking through this list, I think we should just. You know, maybe pick one thing on this list and pass it or don't or change it. You know, as far as the handbook. No, well, here there's a list of the head of departments for changes that they would like to see. It's two pages long, almost. <clears throat> I still think we should set we should set something up after elections, of course. <laughs> Thank you. And um, <laughs> when time allows, that we need to start addressing what the department heads have listed and start knocking them off one by one. I think you guys are saying the same thing. Pardon me. I think you guys are saying the same thing. Yeah. Well, there's a list. Hey, Membership for health benefits? Yeah. You know, that'd be another great, great perk. Those were guys who worked here. Tag membership, tag, tag center memberships for, for employees and families. I mean, I thought we already had that. Not for no, city employees. No. Or we get a discount. And I, I would assume if you have an HR department, when I, where I used to work, you also got a break on your insurance policy if your, your, your members are healthy and you would want them to go there. Uh, Numerous places I've worked, they actually paid your memberships to go outside of, of, of our work facility. Was it a union facility? Yes, it was. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never, never worked for a place that paid a carte blanche. They'd say, yep. you're, you're for a place you get, you get a 25% discount or something. Well, <laughs> the girls would go, I'm not going to name names, but a lot of girls I worked with would go right to the gym in West Bend. And as long as you were enrolled, they just sent it right to. A lot of these things still care won't them. cost us anything. They'll probably save us money, but a lot of them will cost something. So somebody has to do an estimate of what the impact on the budget might be. And that's where they come in. Uh, so we know what, we're, what you guys are getting into. Uh, you know, a lot of these things are just, are just copy the next save money. And giving somebody part of your education, I can't see a downside to that. No. Reducing reducing turnover or IE retention is right. That's cheap. I, I think yeah, Andy and I spoke a while back, and I don't know if we did this briefly, but with the payouts that are happening, you know, those surprise retirement. I don't know when somebody's retiring. If they were here 20 years, they get their, you know, a, a pretty hefty payout anyway. Maybe that's something we could work into. Each department does a figure on, you know, George here maybe has. 30 years till he retires, like what is the annual contribution of his expected payout at the end of that term? And then in our budgets, we put that small amount for the expected well, anticipated you know, age of retirement. And then we don't have these surprises like that. There is a fund already sitting there. You know, if somebody does retire or you know, if any of that happens, there's a fund sitting there in each department that you have a 
minimal annual contribution to there'd be a personnel they were going to do uh, personnel budget that, those are all great things and like i say somebody that doesn't estimate the cost of any but then uh but this, these things take a while it's probably going to take till the end of the year so you get it rounded out to be where you want it to be um but you can you know uh like I said, this all replaced. We used to have union employees, and then, then we had Act 10, and now we got this. So, uh, but I think the employee handbook should be updated and, and updated every two to three years so that they don't get out of whack. So it's competitive. And that's what you're going to do. Yeah, that is what we're going to do. So, um, and I'll get a hold of you too so we can. <laughs> Get everybody on board and get this worked out. Get a hold of who? Me? I'm going to get a hold of the stage. Then this item, so you had motion to table it to the next. I did. Okay. Then... And Jack's the only one left here. Oh, sure. <laughs> and pretty much this is going to be an issue that was on the agenda every month sure. for like five years. Five years that we're done, but I don't expect it takes five years, maybe a year. No. <laughs> All right. Moving here. Here, it's, it's going to be under a year. I can tell you that right now, for sure. Okay, can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I'll second at 8.11 p.m. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Talking soon, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, so we are at public safety. Okay. Right. Calling the public safety meeting at 8 11 p.m. Roll call, please. Elder Person Kingston. Here. Elder person Bob Smith. Here, Scott. Elder person Roger Smith. Here. Thank you. Joe, approval of minutes for the February 27th. I make a motion to approve the minutes of February 27th, the Public Safety Committee meeting minutes. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Are there any citizen comments pertaining to public safety? Seeing none, we'll move on to the monthly EMS report. And we still have you, ladies. <laughs> yep. Yes, we're still here. We're hanging on. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, calls for service, we're still tracking right along where we were last year, still very busy, and we expect that to continue. Um, training, Julie's going to quick cover. Just real quick, um, again, we're in license renewal year. So this was quarter one training with our medical control. So it was Quite a bit of information that we had to kind of go through and that is about it and then number three for our staffing our staffing again our numbers are great very solid um our newest uh team members that are doing fantastic i think i mentioned last time uh, julie's class had a graduation rate of 100 percent, and 100 percent of the students received their licensing to the National Registry in the state of Wisconsin. So um, they've been very meaningful team members and have taken a lot of call time and we just couldn't be happier with their performance and with their participation for the city of Mayville. Any questions? Awesome. Anybody have anything to add? No questions here. That's good news, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thanks guys. Yeah, thank you. congratulations on your man becoming uh, awarded the uh, whatever it was. I saw that. Actually, that was the Mave, uh, our EMS was chosen as EMS provider of the, for the city of Mave, or for the Dodge County. So we, as a team, got the award and Ducky accepted it on our behalf. We were absolutely thrilled that Ducky was able to go and receive it because he's actually one of our charter members. He started many, many years ago with us and then became full-time in Beaverdam and now continues to serve the city of Mayville. So it was a great honor for us to get the award. It really what made me proud to see that. Anyway. Thank you. Okay, moving on to monthly fire department report. Quick an update. 
Hello, gentlemen. Good evening. Brad had a, an event with his twin, so he was not able to make it, and he didn't get the link for the Zoom this time. Oh, okay. So I'll be doing the uh, equipment and staffing, and Mike will be doing the fire call update. So on equipment, nothing's really changed since last month. I did get the emergency lights repaired on, on one of the units. Um, we haven't started the cylinder project, but it's going to get done this year. Um, I did finally find a company that's going to test our hose. In fact, it's on schedule for April 14th and 15th, as long as it's above 40 degrees. And then they'll also do ground ladders. because We have uh, 263 feet of ground ladders that have to get tested every year. So yeah. that's a good thing. Um, any question on equipment? Thanks. All right, then I'll move All on. Right. Question. Yes. You were talking about the testing of the hoses. Yep. Was you had somebody doing that who they weren't coming back? They're coming back now again. They had, they, had, they had employee issues. Okay. If they're coming back. It's a little bit more money. It's still cheaper for them to do it than for us to do it. It would take us all summer to do it and then also to get the guys to do it. It's good to get one truck done, but by the time you get all the trucks done, nobody wants to do it, and it takes longer and longer. Uh, this way, it's done in a day or a day and a half. So, and the pressures are monitored. We get a report. Everything's digital. It's right there. So, okay. so it's a cost savings over. Yes, yes, it's all the cost savings. Good. All right, and then moving on to uh, staffing. Uh, up until today, we were still at 20 people, but we just had a, a resignation sent in tonight, so we'll be dropping down to 19. Uh, one of our members moved out of the service area. They're more than 15 miles away, so uh, they gave their letter, and they're going to be get, uh, turning their gear in tomorrow. Um, so we're at 19 members. Um, our newest member, he's on board, but he doesn't start class until fall, so right now he's a, a gopher or we can't put him in harm's way, so I always buddy him up with somebody or Brad buddy him up mm -hmm. and to explain things. Um, like we still have three people in firefighter one, or, I'm sorry, firefighter two, and one in uh, emergency service instructor, and I have one that's running a driver operator pumper in aerial classes, one's one day and one's the other day. So we do have some, and as Brad stated before, uh, 90% of our members are firefighter one. Uh, so, and that's one of our ordinances now is when they get fired, they have to be firefighter one within two years. Okay. So that's all I have on staffing. Any questions on that? Otherwise, Michael, do fireballs. Okay. Well, just a question. So yep. we're down to 19. What, what size, what do we need to have to be effective? We still are. Okay. Um, we haven't turned down any calls. Um, we get equipment out. We haven't passed any mutual aid calls yet either. I mean, at what point does it become critical to get more people? More people always would be better, especially if they're trained. Well, yeah, um, I, I get that. But I mean, if we get down to 15, are we in danger? No, no. I, I think we get down to like 12 or less, then we got to worry. Yeah. They're okay because they have supporting. Yes. Kikaski's really. Okay. Does does well. Uh, Teresa does well. There they we get go. all lot of the support. They fact they got to race to get there before those guys do sometimes. If there's an auto aid in place. Kasky comes to all our calls. Yeah. The little air calls, and then we have the Mavis, which is a mutual aid box alarm. And I, I like seeing the our own redundancy that you guys yes. have built in. Yes. I think that's it, really as we see it, like we had that fire out on Green Bay Drive as Brad and I were driving up the hill by the golf course, we went to the next level right away because we knew it was going to be a bigger fire. So, um, which starts our uh, Kikoski and Mabel is, is a, it's called a still. Then we go to a working still, which brings in two or three other departments. And then there's five more levels to go. And as you go down, once you get to the second level, of the box, then you bring other resources along with that. You bring in a Mavis coordinator, you get Dodge County dispatch to bring the trailer. So yeah. it, it's all we have the Chiefs go at the beginning of every year, we review them and then we update them. And then it's all on an app that they request can we make these and then we accept it or deny it. And yeah. they, they try not to take more than 20% 
from any department okay. in so the area. So nobody's getting drained. So nobody's right. getting drained. Before it used to be, you could enter, you could, the whole north side of that county would get wiped out from one call. There's still calls where they. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. It depends what it is in the magnitude. But they try to stay less 20% or less. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank yep. you for answering my question. I yep. Good evening. Uh, we're at 20 calls here today. Right now, we've had eight since our last meeting. Um, we had three of them that were a fire alarm. We had two that were actual fires. One was a building fire, one was a structure fire, uh, one for EMS, uh, one for an electrical or an odor, is what it was. And then we have one that was a uh, motor vehicle accident versus a pole. You handled the main street one mm -hmm. garage by yourself. Yep. yep. Well, we, and we did that with uh, seven people from yeah, our department. I, I, well, I listened to the whole thing. It's very entertaining. Yeah. Well, we wound up with five other departments. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's where we call for our partners in that working still. I called for that within two minutes of a call. Because it was quite the house or anything. Were able, no. That was amazing. Two no. cars no. there. Yeah. yeah. That was, um, that, that's our goal. Yeah. So, Good job for that. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank well, you, John. Thank you. We appreciate, we appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Good night. Talk to you soon. All right. Number six, monthly police department report. Thank you, Ryan. That's me. <laughs> you not so good. <laughs> Um, the police department, just kind of a departmental update. We have our Citizens Police Academy starting on Thursday. Um, and uh, we're pretty excited about that. Um, we are running short handed currently, personnel wise. We have officers out of injury, broke his ankle. Uh, it's going to be a couple of months the way that it looks. Uh, we're able to cover with some overtime shifts and our extra staffing and get the detective and that has been very helpful. Um, as Oliver Olson mentioned, Easter Basket Hunt, Tyler Park, uh, Saturday, April 1st. Um, we'll be out there for that. Um, and then uh, one last thing, sadly, uh, uh, one of our past officers, Bob Chamartin, who served for the city from 1990 to 2005, passed away with his third bout of um, cancer. Um, the funeral for that is Thursday. Visitation starts at 10 a.m. At St. Mary's Church, uh, the funeral was at 12 30. Um, from a call volume wise, we're actually down a little bit from last year. Um, our call volume in February was, uh, I would say, about 15% less than it was last year at this time, which is good, good for us. Um, um, but the officers are busy, and uh, because we are short handed, uh, um, we're working the tails on. But uh, from an departmental standpoint, that's about it. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to return. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Joe, did you miss time to speak for public works? Is that what you were here? No, it's no. not